block cross treatment interaction effect the main aim is to check if the treatment and blocks interact so the model is given by yijk equals to mu plus tau i plus bj plus tau bij plus eijk where mu is the overall population mean tau i is the effect of the i treatment your i ranges from 1 to t bj is the effect of the jth block your j ranges from 1 to b tau b i j is the interaction effect of the i treatment and the jth block e i j k is the random error term normally distributed with a mean of zero and constant variance and your k ranges from 1 to the number of replications so we'll firstly need the ANOVA to test from the ANOVA table, we have source of variance, degrees of freedom, sum of square, mean sum of square, F calculated and F tabulated. For source of variance, we have treatments with degrees of freedom T minus 1 and sum of squares SS treatment. We also have blocks with degrees of freedom B minus 1 and sum of squares of blocks as SSB. We also have interaction with degrees of freedom given by the product of the degrees of freedom of the treatment and the degrees of freedom of the blocks which is t minus 1 times b minus 1 and sum of squares as sst cross b also need the errors with the degrees of freedom bt into r minus 1 and sum of squares of the errors is nothing but SSE. Finally, we'll need the totals with degrees of freedom BTR minus 1. And total sum of squares SSTO. Moving to mean sum of square, we have mean sum of square of treatment given by the sum of square of treatment divided by the degrees of freedom of treatment. We also have the mean sum of square of blocks given by the sum of square of blocks divided by the degrees of freedom of blocks. We also have the mean sum of square of interactions given by the sum of square of interactions divided by the degrees of freedom of interactions. Most importantly, we have the mean sum of square of error given by the sum of square of error divided by the degrees of freedom of error. Lastly, we'll need fcal and f tabulated to conduct our test. So we'll first have to check for interactions. We'll be checking if all the tau b i j are equals to zero, meaning there is no interaction or at least one of the tau b i j is not zero meaning there is an interaction and for that we'll have to use f cal given by mst cross b divided by mse which will compare with f tabulated at alpha with the degrees of freedom of interactions and the degrees of freedom of errors so if f cal is less than f tabulated will fail to reject ho but if f cal is greater than f tabulated will reject ho if we fail to reject ho it means there is no interaction so we'll have to test for the effect of treatment and the effectiveness of blocking. And for that, we'll use FCAL given by MST over MSE to check if whether the means differ or not. I'm referring to the treatment means. So we'll compare with the F tabulated at alpha with the degrees of freedom of treatment and the degrees of freedom of error. And we also need FCAL given by 
MSB divided by MSE, which will have to compare with F tabulated at alpha with the degrees of freedom of the blocks and the degrees of freedom of the error in order to check if blocking was effective. But under the interaction effect, if we reject HO, it means that we conclude that there is an interaction. So there is no need to test for the effectiveness of blocking because there is an interaction mean there is already a factor. So blocking was effective. Hopefully you are getting along with me. So let me first give you the formula. So calculate the sum of squares. Then we'll do a question that you can have a better understanding. The total sum of square is given by the triple summation where your i ranges from 1 to the number of treatments, your j ranges from 1 to the number of blocks, your k ranges from 1 to the number of replication of each observation squared minus the sum of all observations squared divided by the overall number of observations. So this is applicable using the observations. You can also use this one using the grant mean. So the first part, as you can see, is the same. The only difference is here. For here, for the grant sum, you are dividing by BTR, but for the grant mean, you multiply by BTR. You can also use this one. It's much advisable when given the means per each cell. So, because the grant mean can also be given by 1 over BT, the double summation, where your I ranges from 1 to T, your J ranges from 1 to B of the means per each cell. You'll get this more when we do the example. It's very much clear. Moving to SS model is given by 1 over R, the double summation, I ranging from 1 to T, J ranges from 1 to B of the sum of each cell square minus the grand sum square divided by the total number of observations using the observations and also using the means this can be extended to so it can be written as r the double summation now we're using the mean per each cell square minus btr times the grand mean square and also given the mean per each cell it's advisable to replace this part by this part here, yeah, as you can see. So this one is most advantageous when given the mean per each cell and a, sh a shortcut. So using SS model, we can find SS interaction and SSE. And for the SS interaction, we'll need SS treatment and SS block. So for the SS treatment, we have 1 over BR multiplied by the summation from I equals to 1 to T of the sum per each treatment square minus the grand sum square divided by the overall number of observation, which can also be written as BR, the summation from I equals to 1 to T the estimated effect of treatment square where the estimated effect of treatment is nothing but the mean per each treatment minus the grant mean. So this can be easily simplified to BR, the summation from I equals to 1 to T, the mean per each treatment square minus BTR the grant mean square. This is due to the mean per each treatment is nothing but the sum per each treatment divided by BR. And using the mean per each cell, 
we can find SS treatment by this formula. So this part, I already explained it while finding SSTO and SS model. So I will explain this part. This part is due to the mean per each treatment can also be calculated by 1 over B, the summation from J equals to 1 to B, the mean per each cell on that treatment. So in fact, this is just a matter of substitution. You can take it from here, you'll arrive here. That's all. So we're moving to SS block. We have SSB given by 1 over TR, the summation from J equals to 1 to B, the sum per each block square minus the grand sum square divided by BTR, which can also be calculated by TR, the sum from J equals to 1 to B, the estimated effect of each block square where the estimated effect of each block is nothing but the mean per each block minus the grand mean. So this one can be simplified to TR, the summation from J equals to one to B, the mean per each block square minus BTR, the grand mean square. This is due to the mean per each block is the sum per each block divided by TR. So using the mean per each cell, we can use this formula. So this part, I already explained it. Uh, this part is also due to the mean per each block can be given by 1 over t, the summation from i equals to 1 to t, the mean per each cell on that block. Finally, we can calculate SSE by SSTO minus SS model and SST cross B by SS model minus SSB minus SST. Thank you and God bless you. So we'll do a question on the next video. You'll have a better understanding. But please watch this video before doing that question with me.